So, are you sure you can do this? Dude, will you please calm down. I can do this, all right? Dude, relax, all right? It's a zombie film that I happen to like, all right? So, I'm good. All right? All right, I'm just saying, man. What's the man? Dude, oh, come on! It, it was a bad Ghostbusters film, all right? Uh, I the last zombie film I revealed was that Resident Evil film with Troy. <laughs> I don't think I ought to do the rest of those anymore. Uh, there's still one more live action film, and there's also the um, the CGI films. Oh, and those uh, two other things are on YouTube. What other ones? Uh, the Arkley Bound thing, also known as David, and there's also the, oh, you, the executive video. Yes, yes. <sighs> okay, look, uh... Oh, like, look, uh, here's the, look, here, take, here, take, take the game. Wait, why do you want me to play Resident Evil 2? Because I need you to familiarize yourself with the game, uh, because uh, Joe and I are going to do the video sooner or later. Are you sure? Yes, just to familiarize yourself, just familiarize yourself with it, uh, it we'll, you know, we'll get started sooner or later, okay? And then I got a couple of videos to do right now, alright, so can I just sit down in my chair and, like, uh, talk? Probably need a new, you know, you need a new cover for it. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to need to cover for it, though. But then again, most people don't give a shit because because mostly it's sitting on my. I'm using my ass to sit on it. All right, so just go. Okay, okay, okay. I'll go. Hey, is it okay if I hit the gym later? You hit the gym all the time. Seriously? Oh well, yeah, because I. Oh well, yeah, because I do karate. Are you the only guy in this in this household that does the karate in the gym? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, I do kickboxing, so whatever. We gotta get... Uh, just go, all right? Look, what about uh, Joe? Uh, look, okay, sooner or later, we gotta teach Joe how to fight. I mean, he's just a street fighter. Oh, uh, no, but uh, just, just don't worry about it. Hey. No, uh, the other door. The, the other door. There you go, all right? All right, see you later. Unbelievable. Oh, and the camera's recording, too. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Ferox Frank Reviews. Yes, this is I, Ferox Frank, and in case you haven't noticed, I got myself a new sleeveless hoodie because the last hoodie I had uh, was completely destroyed because I kind of ran out of the drunken rant because I uh, got destroyed at a bar. Hmm. Yeah, I got ripped off in a bar fight. So that hoodie is gone. Moment of silence for the hoodie. May it rest in peace. Okay, now that's said and done. In case you probably heard Rex and I talking, uh, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna be doing the Resident Evil co-op video sooner or later, which is gonna be for mostly Resident Evil Two. Mostly Joe and I are gonna be playing the game, and Rex is gonna be hosting it. I need him to play the game, so he needs to familiar himself with it. I mean, he's played the original game so many times, and these things, and I got poison ivy again. All right, so that's why these things are here. But, so I need to familiar. So I need him to familiar uh, be familiar with the game because he's only used to the original one, not the current one. All right, and uh, I also feel better too. All right, uh, they got me Resident Evil Four Remake, and um, I played it, I beat it, and I enjoyed it. And final verdict: uh, Do I like Resident Evil Four Remake? Yes, I do. I actually do quite enjoy it. Do I find it's better than the original? Fuck yes. Uh, I find it is way better. It surpasses the original in every way to the point where the original one could go fuck itself. <laughs> okay, look, I, I'm a little being sarcastic here, but then again, looking at the original one and looking at the remake, yeah, the remake stayed well into the horror franchise. It stayed well in tune with survival horror, while the original one... Did not. Uh, it mostly tried to be, it cater towards the action genre, which, like how the films were doing, and the films were fucking failures. I mean that in a passion. If you saw Troy and I's videos on the uh, movies. Now, that being out of the way, you, you also overheard me I'm doing a zombie film today. And I decided it is time to talk about a beloved zombie film that the critics not only do the film not only does the film community viewers but also the critics actually like we're going to take a look at the original 1980s classic Return of the Living Dead 
And yes, this is the Blu-ray version, not the DVD version. <laughs> ah, this is a lovely, lovely film. Why do we, why does everybody like this one? And this is kind of weird the way I'm finally doing this film, because I just did the uh, sequel years ago. <laughs> so yeah, think about that. During my first couple of seasons, I uh, I did the original, I did the uh, the sequel, and now I'm finally doing the original after all this time. It's not even Halloween. <laughs> so why the hell am I reviewing it? Well, it's a good movie, number one. Number two, this is a movie that breaks all the rules on zombie films. Oh, boy. I mean, there are golden rules when it comes to zombie films. I mean, there are literal golden rules when it comes down to the zombie film industry. All right? Seriously. Keep this in mind, all right? There are rules that every film goes through when it comes down to making a zombie movie, all right? Every director knows about this, and so does every uh, movie maker know about this, all right? There's, there's basically divided it into three rules, all right? Three. Zombies are slow and dumb, number one. Slow and dumb, number one. Number two, they're extremely... Okay, to be fair, well, even though they're... Sl okay, going back to number one, they're slow and dumb, but they're extremely strong... <laughs> I mean, vastly strong. Because you know how, for say, uh, say if I try to, to squeeze this water bottle like this, this is a metal water bottle with a plastic coating onto it. If I try to squeeze it, it's going to hurt my hand. If I squeeze into it hard enough, I'm going to hurt my hand, and also maybe develop some kind of tendonitis or something. Whatever. But here's the thing: a zombie can continuously squeeze into this thing because while pain is actually causing me to stop, the zombie they can't feel shit. They can just break it, because they have no limits to their strength. While a human has limits to their strength, zombies don't. That's pretty. You know, that's just pretty sick, kind of scary about zombies. All right, so number one, they're slow and dumb but strong. Number uh, so number two, they don't talk. I mean, they just they make gar they make gargling grunt noises. Like, they make gargling noises, grunt noises. Growls, moans, you know, they do anything but talk. Okay? Now, there are some instances where zombies can actually, t where zombies can talk, but it's a very, very rare occurrence when it happens, okay? When it does actually happen, though, it's usually when a person is turning into a zombie and they have some shred of their humanity left, though, and they try to fight the urge, but you ultimately fail in the end. <laughs> and number three, the absolute golden rule. Of zombie films, all right? Yeah, hit them in the brain. You shoot them in the head, decapitate them. Aim for the brain. You aim for this. They go down and they die. And boys and girls of all ages, guess what this film did? Guess what this beloved classic did? It took all three of those rules and just chucked it out the window. Oh my God! It just Tossed them out the window. Now, to be fair, this film is beloved by many as a horror classic, but it's a horror comedy, all right? But it has a massive emphasis of horror, okay? Now, who stars in the movie? Well, ironically enough, the actors like t uh, the actors who play Joey and Eddie from the movie are actually in this one, too. But this is the first film they star in, and Tom Matthews, who plays Freddy <laughs> in this movie, also later gets... Uh, and after the second movie, actually stars as Tommy in um, Friday the Thirteenth Part Six, and he would later continue to play Tommy in the in like future installments, fan projects, even in the video game. Not even joking. All right, he basically has committed to the role of Tommy. Yeah, try getting Jason Voorhees into the Living Dead, into the Return of the Living Dead franchise. And, wait, what the fuck am I talking about? That sounds like a great crossover! Why couldn't we have that? Think about it! Jason Voorhees walks into the Return of the Living Dead, and they try to eat him, but he's already dead as it is, he starts ripping him to pieces because he's a fucking monster? How awesome would that be? Huh? Huh? Okay, I think I'm, okay, I'm, I'm going a little overboard here. Although, it is a little weird knowing that when Tom Matthews is in the Friday the 13th franchise, the first film he stars in is the one when Jason comes back as a zombie. And Jason doesn't eat people in that one. He just goes around killing people. He doesn't eat anybody, which is weird. 
But then again, Jason is not exactly a normal, sensible zombie. He's just brought back to life, and he's, he's still him. I get it with Jason. But Jason's not in this one. Instead, why would they be calling Joe and Eddie? They're called Freddy and Frank. All right? Now, it's Freddy's first day, and the, before you say anything else, I don't want any Freddy Krueger comments, uh, Freddy Krueger jokes in the comment section, all right? So if you have any Freddy Krueger uh, jokes, please save it for a Nightmare on Elm Street film, some that I may do. Which I've only done one film, now that I think about it. Wow, now that I think about it, I've only done one Freddy Krueger film. Actually, if you count the Freddy vs. Jason film, I've only done two movies with him. Wow. Hey, wow, I am just a real asshole. I mean, yeah, I'm an asshole, but wow, I have yet to do more films with Freddy Krueger. I've done Michael Meyer films, I've done a, ton, I've done a good amount of Jason films. And I've only done one film with the Hellraiser himself, Pinhead, or the Hell Priest, as he's called. Yeah, something's telling me I gotta do more of those movies. But enough about that. What's this film about? Well, here's something that I really kind of stress. I think maybe the actor, obviously Frank's actor kind of screwed this one up a little bit, though, but... He actually goes on, he st Freddy and Frank work at a medical supply warehouse, and Frank starts talking to Freddy about the whole Night of the Living Dead film, and said the whole thing was based on a true story. It's clearly a rumor that's been going around for decades, and even to this day, it's still a rumor that goes on, that goes around saying that, yes, it's actually happened, but it was in a small, contended area, but the movie here took a liberty of that. It basically took uh, that idea and said, okay, let's make, um... Let's get a backstory based on it. All right, that's fine. So they said that the whole thing took place in Pennsylvania, originally like uh, the original movie took place in. Which Night of the Living Dead is still a great film, not gonna lie. But he said that the bodies were actually later, dis whenever dis destroyed, they were just disposed of in containers, and there was some screw up, and the army got sc screwed up to get the shipping addresses, and they were sent there. and sent right there in the warehouse by accident and he'd been there for 15, for over 17 years. But here's one thing that that Frank's actor screwed up on. I mean, yeah, the guy who plays him is a great is a good actor. I'll give him that much, but it's the year he screwed it up on. He said that the whole incident took place in 1969. All right, 1969. Um you do realize that the movie Night of the Living Dead came out 1968, right? Maybe you should have said the movie, that the incident took place in 1967. Hmm? It's a minor pet peeve. It kind of derails most of half the film, but you know what? They Maybe the actor just kind of forgot. All right? I mean, it does happen. You know, an actor tends to forget something. So they just rolled with it. And so, okay, after, well, after Freddy gets a full, after Frank gives Freddy a full tour of the whole great, of the whole warehouse. Like they got a couple of good medical supplies, a half-dog uh, corpses, though, that are mostly used for displays, and a human corpse in the free in the freezer getting ready for transport for, month, for, uh, for later on the weekend. <sighs> and he, Frank decides to show Freddy the containers, and we see the containers, yeah! And he says, hey, don't worry about it, kid. They can't even... Nah, don't worry about it. This thing is solid as a rock, all right? He hits it, and the gas comes right out and releases the toxin. Yeah, the trioxin, the 246 trioxin, which is, if you remember, that was the what caused the, the dead bodies to come back to life. All right, and here's something else I need to describe, uh, need to get out of my, get off my chest. Uh, apparently, 245... The, the, that the chemical trioxin is actually based on a real chemical called Agent Orange that was used in Vietnam. All right. However, in real life, it actually causes toxic effects and it actually causes poisons and kills people. All right, it doesn't bring people back to uh, back to life uh, in terms of the zombies. No, that was actually used in this movie. Though, to be fair, when Nine Living Dead was actually made and when the incident actually happened, it did take place in the mid '60s, in the late '60s. So, you know what? The time is actually right. You know, I'll give it that much. 
So yeah, the credits roll, and we see Freddy's girl and everybody else come in, and here's the weird thing, some of these actors were actually in Friday the 13th at one point or another, but, <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, they completely screwed up, uh, the, tox uh, the toxins all over the warehouse, it's spread everywhere, the half dogs actually come to life, and the corpse that was in the freezer comes to life too. And he starts he starts slamming on the door, and so Frank calls <laughs> Frank calls his uh, his boss, uh, and he says, uh, "Boss, we need some help here. Can you come here?" And his boss basically comes in, and he fli and he flips his shit. Why wouldn't he? Because that shit is like uh, military toxins. Of course, you're not gonna fuck with it. So he tells him the guy killed the corpse uh, and the spo and dispose of the body. So uh, what does he do? They open it, but the corpse. Here's what it does: it runs right out. It passes Freddy and Frank and goes right for the boss. And okay, okay, they get a pickaxe, they slam it right into the head. It it's not working at all. They cut they cut the head off. It's not working. The body's still flinching around. I go. Uh, and they say, what the fuck is this? You said they killed him in the head, they died. So well, that's what it said. Frank goes, well, that's what it said in the movie. Freddy goes, you mean the movie lied? I'm not going to say anything about that. Let's just move on. <clears throat> so anyway, Freddy's girl, um, which, oh, by the way, this movie takes place in, in uh, Dotsville. I think it's a Louisville, Kentucky, I think. That's where the movie takes place in. Let's take it. Okay, it takes place in Kentucky, but here's the thing. Uh, when we actually see the establishing shot of, like, uh, Freddy's friends coming in to come pick him up, though, you can clearly see that the film was, it was filmed in Los Angeles, because, uh, you know, we see the L.A. skyline and everything, so, okay, yeah, it's one of those films, like, okay, it was filmed in L.A., but it takes place in Louisville, Kentucky, in, like, someplace like Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, just, um... Whatever, or maybe Dodgeville, Kentucky. I kind of forgot what the name of the what the name of the place is, but it does take place in Kentucky. All right, but the, the movie is shot in Los Angeles. Makes sense, right? It's kind of like saying, "Oh, this movie uh, takes place in Newark, New Jersey." Oh, that's great. Except the filming location is in Miami and Boston. How do you fuck that up? <sighs> so anyway, <clears throat> they go down to the uh, under. So they go down to to the. So anyway, Freddy's buddies actually noticed the place was locked up, so basically Freddy, Frank, and the boss are actually cutting up the zombie and getting all the dead animal parts that are alive, putting them in tracks bags. The girl goes straight to the cemetery that's right across the street from them and actually talks to the Undertaker to actually burn the bodies, or destroy the bodies. Anyway, Freddy's uh, girlfriend and their best friend and their friends are chilling at the uh, cemetery just waiting for Freddy to get out. And, Oh, guess what? One of his best friends is played by Linnea Quigley. Yes, sex icon, Lin 80 sex icon, Linnea Quigley. And what does she do? Out of nowhere, she starts to strip and do a new dance to 80s rock, to 80s music. Why does she do that? It's Linnea Quigley, guys. Do you really, do you really need an explanation at this point? It's, 19, it's the 1980s, it's Linnea Quigley... If New Year's in your contract, you gotta know, you know it's gonna happen at some point. I, I, I really got nothing else to say about that. Alright, it's kind of like you say you have like, oh, I don't know, uh, what's the current porn star today? Um, hold on. Uh, Riley Reed, yeah, Riley Reed. It's like uh, saying, oh, okay, she's gonna, she's got nudity in her contract, she's a porn star, she's in this horror film, alright, she's gonna do a nude strip dance, okay, great. Everyone's seen her pornos. We know what she looks like, dude. So let her dance, dude. Yeah, great. Do I even need an explanation on that one? No, I don't. <sighs> so they get to the under. So for it so anyway, the boss, Freddie and Frank, they get to the Undertaker. They after bickering and stuff, knowing the filling in on the situation, he agrees to burn the bodies in the furnace. Takes the bodies to the furnace, and this is arguably the worst thing that ever happens in the movie. They toss all the body part, all the body and everything in there. He lights the furnace up, completely up to maximum, so there's nothing, there's not even ashes behind. Anyway, it releases a gas that goes right into the atmosphere, causes a thunderstorm, and it rains down on the grave, 
causing the chemical mixture and thus bringing all the corpses in the cemetery to life. Yeah. And well, and what happens? Everybody's all freaking out about the rain and stuff. Uh, Freddy's girlfriend goes to the uh, to the warehouse. She can't find Freddy anywhere though. The storm is raging down, and uh, she goes all the way down to the to the basement, and she actually notices there's a, tar, there's a trail of tar. There was a corpse inside the container that was mitten and that was open that the gas leaked from. There's nothing in there now. That's because the uh, zombie came out of there already, and we see the most iconic zombie in the movie, the Tar Man. He sees her, he sees Freddy's girl, and he says, "Raids," and he goes after her. And he's tar man, so he's just brains. I want your brains. And there's something else that's a little fucked up about this movie. Apparently, it's only in the it's only in the current versions of the Blu-rays and the DVD versions, but. Okay, and also Tar Man's actually right here on this version. Okay, this is not the actual cover, the front cover of the of the DVD box. This is one of those like uh, ones that actually has the sticker on it. Yeah, you know, one of these uh, type of things. Like the original cover is just the uh, you know the original Graves thing, but I like this cover a lot better because it looks pretty awesome. So uh, I kept it on here. But one thing that kind of bothers me, and I also found this out recently too, upon. A couple of DVD, a couple of YouTube videos, but apparently, in the original theatrical cut and the VHS cut version, which later was later replaced in the uh, on the television version at one point, but Tarman's original voice sounded a lot different. In this one, he sa- he has that a brains. He has brains. That's what it sounds like right now. However, in the original version, which if you watch the credits, they actually you actually hear the original audio version of what he sounds like, and it sounds like brains. His voice is much more high pitched. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. They should have kept that in the in this cut. I mean, seriously, the high pitched thing coming from this face is actually scarier. They should have kept that. In the in the current versions, why they replace it? Do you need an explanation? It's like, oh, it's uh, the new age. We got we got to replace some sound effects and stuff. Okay, replace Starman's voice. Anyway, Freddy's friends are go- she's hiding. Freddy's friends are, go- are scrambling back and forth. Uh, and uh, okay, they actually find Tar Man, and one of the friends actually sees Tar Man, and uh, well, he rips it and he bites the skull open and kills the guy. And oh yeah, here's a fun fact: the guy who gets his head gets his head bitten open, he's the asshole who killed the uh, the stupid the, the dumb kid in uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. He's the reason why uh, the killing the killing spree actually happened. You know, no, he's the same guy. I really don't fucking care. He, I wanted to see that character die. I just think of him as the uh, as the guy who got away in part five, and he gets killed by a zombie apocalypse. It was so satisfying. You know, that's just a horror fan in me. But joking aside, anyway, the friends they just they locked Harman into the basement, and they run back to the cemetery. And at that point, all the zombies start coming out, and they run to the mortuary and. Freddy and Frank are not doing so well. In fact, because the fact they were exposed to the chemical at point blank range. Now, in case you haven't realized it, if anybody was exposed to the chemical, they start turning into the zombies. So, they were exposed to it, they're going to turn into the into the living dead. So anyway, uh, the friends they get separated. Uh, two of the friends actually wind up getting locked up back in the, into the warehouse, and everybody else makes it into the mortuary except Lydia Quigley. She's She's full nude, she gets attacked by the zombies, and later on she becomes a zombie. Yeah. We got a naked zombie going running around, you know it's Linda quickly. All joking aside. Well, that's out of the cat well that cat's out of the bag, so what happens? They fortify and they just uh, they call for help. An ambulance shows up, but they get attacked by the zombies, and then another ambulance shows up, and the zombies keep sending traps. So the zombies keep calling him, and it's like, send more, co- send another ambulance. It's not good here. Um, good brain, by the way. And cops come in, it's like, uh, no, 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 no. 
Hey, is everything okay there? Mm, good break. Send more cops. And it goes on for a while until the until the Ohio copter comes by and they see that it's really bad. The police actually just get the riot gear and um, it just it just gets worse and worse. It, it's a full blown outbreak at this point. <laughs> There's also a slight joke going around with Freddy and Frank. It's like, uh, if you'll... Because uh, Frank keeps yelling out, if you like this job. It's also a call... This is basically the callback joke that was actually also in uh, Part 2, but... Like I said, that in Part 2 it was a callback reference, but like I said before, if you saw my first video on that, you know for, eh, for a fact that Part 2 was my introduction to this film series, and, was on, and Part 2 was one of the first zombie films I ever saw, so... Yeah. I was just new to the whole. I was new to the whole zombie thing at the time as a, as a young preteen. So I saw the sequel first. When I was a teenager, yeah, got to see this one. I got to see uh, the dude uh, Linnea quickly do a dance and become a zombie and start killing people. Yeah, that's how um, my introduction to horror films was. You know, somebody's telling me I gotta do the gate sooner or later, but all all that aside, how's the film progress further? Well, more zombies try to break in, they kill they try their best to fight them off, one or two more people get killed, and a spider, by the way, who's one of the other who's the only black guy who's in the movie so far. Yeah, you're a black guy in an 80s horror film. You're gonna die, right? Actually, okay, look, spoiler alert, pretty much everybody dies at the end. But I'm not gonna but it's uh, not what, how you think it is. So. Anyway, the boss and anyway, the Undertaker actually grabs one of the corpses, like cuts it, cuts the corpse in half, and interrogates it. And the corpse basically—it's a female corpse. He says she's eat. They're eating. They're not eating humans. They're eating the brains because the brains can actually the brains can suppress the pain that they're constantly feeling. So the zombies are, they're still feeling, all right? While regular zombies don't feel shit, they do, all right? And they say they eat the brain so, so they can suppress the pain that they're constantly feeling all the time. But it has to be the brains, not nothing else. So. And like I said before, this movie broke all the rules. And they basically said you can't shoot them in the brain to kill them. You have to... You can't kill them. I mean, they're basically brought back to life. They're they're back, so you can't kill them because they're already dead. Okay. Here's a real fun fact. This movie got a massive backlash from that. All right, Return of the Living Dead got a massive backlash, saying, "Okay, you have to kill a zombie. It's a fucking golden rule." All right. So you know what the filmmakers did in part two? They actually admitted there is another way to kill these things aside from burning them alive. But if you burn them alive, the smoke inhalation and the ash is gonna turn is gonna create more zombies. So you know what they do? Electrocute them. Okay, you electrocute them. Get a stun watch. Zap them. Boom. They're dead. They're they're back to being a stiff corpse. Problem solved. Problem is nobody in this film figured it out until the second movie came out. So you know, it just occurred to me amongst with all the remakes. <laughs> All the new stuff that's coming out. I've heard a rumor saying they thought about maybe remaking this movie. <laughs> Good luck. That's all I gotta say. If you're gonna do that, mix it in part one and two together. All right, so we can get that BS. So we get this bullshit out of the way. Anyway, Freddie and Frank, um, they actually do become their, their condition gets worse. They get locked into the chapel inside the mortuary. But they do but later become zombies, and Freddy attacks everybody. Frank, okay, now here's the thing. The actor in the second movie did actually attack a bunch of soldiers, but in this one, he doesn't, which I found that was interesting. It said Frank, he just runs past everybody, and he locks himself in the furnace room, and he starts having regrets. All right, yes, he's a zombie. He's in constant pain. And rather than eating brains, which, okay, there's brains readily available for him, rather than just assist Freddy in going and killing everybody... He locks himself in the furnace and he he burns himself alive because he has nothing but instant regret. I'm not gonna lie, this is actually the saddest. I gotta say, this is the saddest thing that's in the movie, knowing that you actually feel really bad for the for the zombie here. Yes, it's basically his fault. 
and he feels the only way to redeem himself is to kill himself. So, and for the sake of his own marriage, he said, the hell with this. He takes the ring off, and he just, he, clo- he, go- he, he crawls into the furnace, and he locks it from the inside, and he burns himself alive. You know what? Let's just give him a moment here, alright? That, that's actually pre- it's actually one of the best moments in the movie where Freddy just kills himself. Where Frank just kills himself. I feel bad for the guy, but still. Hey, yeah, I mean, he caused all this and he feels terrible and the only way he can redeem himself is to kill himself. And he's a fucking zombie, so what is he going to do? He can't help them. If he does, tries to help them, he's going to try to eat their brains. So he just offs himself, so he's no longer an issue. Okay, it makes sense. Anyway, at some point they actually burn Freddy's eyes out, and uh, which is kind of weird because in this, right here in the image here on the spine, you can actually see there's an that there's a zombie with his uh, eyes burned out. That's actually that's Tom Matthews is Freddy. Yeah. So, okay, the Undertaker and the Freddy's girlfriend they lock themselves in the attic of the uh, mortuary, but they cut all access out. Uh, the the boss and Spider they actually head out to, into one of the cars. But they can't get that far. They couldn't actually go back and get everybody because there's t- there's hundreds of zombies all over the place. They're running after them, trying to break the damn windows open. So instead of which, they actually run straight to the uh, to the uh, straight to the warehouse where this whole thing started. Where there's two other, where well, the other two friends have been there the whole time. We got one who's trying to get laid, the other one who hates him. I mean, okay, there's a guy and a girl there. They hate each other, and yet they confess that yes, they still hate each other, but they're happy that they're together. It's one of those ridiculous horror things. Just, just go with it. So, okay, Spider and the boss make it there. And, okay, they figure there's actually one more phone. The phone in the office is, is act, it was actually destroyed from one of the uh, break-ins earlier. So, they decide, okay, there's a phone in the basement. Wait, the tar man is there. The boss gets fed up. He grabs the basement while he says, open the goddamn... Sp- Spider, open that fucking door. All right, he opens the door. He he beats he literally beats the shit out of the um, out of Tarman. He 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 knocks the head off of the basement and he beats down the body and they head down to the basement to call uh, to call in. Get they get through the cops. They have a police barricade, but the problem is the zombies already broke through the bar- they start eating everybody breaking through the barricade, and so hmm, wait, there's the military number right there. Just call the military. Just get this shit over with. And you know what's really messed up? Throughout the entire movie, we actually found that the military has been still looking for this for the lo- for the longest time because they know there's going to be an outbreak sooner or later, and they're actually prepared for it. So the boss calls in the military. They actually can confirm that they actually had been waiting for something like this to happen. So what happens? They send a cruise missile from one of the from a transport sh- from a transport train, and it hit a Sidewinder missile that's basically more powerful enough to take out several city blocks. And the last image we, we see of everybody is, like, they hear the sound of the incoming missile. Freddy actually, we get to see Freddy about to attack uh, his girlfriend and the Undertaker, and the zombies are just standing still, like, oh, and kaboom! Yep. It just wipes everybody out. Kills them all. Nobody lives. Everybody dies. <laughs> That's uh, one way to end the film. They, everybody dies. There's no survivors. <laughs> yeah, we actually hear over the intercom with the uh, with the general who actually caused who actually uh, wants the missile attack, saying it was justifiable. The president will be there soon enough uh, to actually give a statement. And clearly, uh, they said that there looks like. Um, uh, okay, you remember earlier when I said how the rain would actually sp- that the ashes from the from the burning flesh would actually go go into the atmosphere and actually mix the chemical in with the rain and start spreading the virus. Well, apparently they si- they continue with that sh- with that shit in the end, but uh, yeah, the movie basically ends like that. It just it cuts to the end uh, where basically the, the rain will wash away all the ashes. And it looks like it's uh, setting itself up for a sequel, which the sequel negates all of that. Yeah. Apparently the fire explosion kills everybody except for the containers, which they actually did wind up getting the containers. They transport them, and another zombie outbreak actually later occurs. That's where part two happens. 
why did they negate the fact that the chemical what's mixed in, what turns into ash and mixed in with the with the atmosphere turns mixes in with rain and it makes it worse? Yeah, like I said, the movie kind of got a massive backlash from that. So they pretty much just said, okay, you know what? Take this part, toss it out the window. All right, we're not doing that shit. All right, if the gas is actually mixed in with the rain, but if it goes into the ground, it'll mix in better. So that's what happened with the sequel. And we get to see the, the highlights of the movie, and we hear Tarman's original voice, which, joking aside, is actually much more creepier when you first hear it, so, rather than it was in the movie. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Now I finally got that off my chest. So, would I highly recommend Return to the Living Dead for my viewers, or for anybody in general? Yeah, actually I do. Like I said, the movie does... Ha now, there are flaws with the movie, like, okay, the whole chemical thing, and not the zombies can't die no matter what the hell you do with them. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, even the horror fans had to, had to give a backlash to that. So, but if it wasn't for part two, we wouldn't figure out that if you just electrocute them, they die. So all they needed was a stun rod. You know, if it, you know, if this would happen today, it's like if a guy took, if a cop took out a taser and just zapped the zombie, it would just stay there dead. <laughs> Guys, use your tasers, kill them all. <laughs> there, remake solved. <laughs> That's how you end the remake. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. Now that I th now that I said that, that would actually be hilarious when you think about. It. Just think about. It. They make a remake of this film, but they actually find out that the taser that uh, electricity kills them completely. All right, so they just get their tasers on and start tasing all the zombies, which is not effective to uh, which doesn't kill us, but it, it kills them. <laughs> that would just be hilarious. I would just laugh my ass off if that actually happened. No, seriously, if I'm in the theater, watch, if I actually go to the theater, and they start tasing the zombies to death, and they, it actually kills them, I would laugh my ass off so much, people will think I'm the Joker, and that's how funny I would laugh. That's how funny the situation would be, but it's funny because it's true. <sighs> okay, but like I said, do I highly recommend Return of the Living Dead? Of course I do. It's a classic 80s zombie movie that... Basically broke the rules, but became a massive classic in its own right and became its own genre of zombie films. We have the Living Dead zombies and we have the Return zombies. So, so they just return from the dead, but they're still dead. How do you kill them? You zap them with electricity. Problem solved. The problem is they didn't figure it out in this movie, they had to figure it out in the sequel. That being said and done, a good movie... I highly recommend it, and I felt better afterwards from watching that terrible movie earlier. And, and what's this? Huh, apparently Joe left me something behind. Well, alright, he wants me to review this, <laughs> this next movie. Okay, Joe, I don't know what this movie is. I mean, it can't be any worse than... No! 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 Fuck you, Joe! Seriously? You want me to review this shit? Folks, please excuse me. I gotta kick evil. I gotta kick evil Joe's ass now because I gotta review that piece of garbage. <laughs> but I'm gonna be as kind. Of, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna fuck him up, Joe. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Ah, uh, Furox, what's wrong with you? Oh, I think you know what's wrong with me. Here, let me just borrow the baseball bat for a second. Oh, no, 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 fuck that shit! Uh, 